Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the developments of the Supreme Court expediting and cap hearings. Our road safety reminder on Young Street Smart Sports and Centers on the proper way of coming out from a garage or parking lot. This week's Pai Chupel shall be about the limit on the number of passengers in PUVs. Showcase this week shall have the pickup from Toyota, the Hilux GRS. While for Ace Weekend, we shall have the highlights of the 2022 Clean Fuel Motocross Invitational Series Round 2. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management as well as developments in the automotive industry are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. It always happens. Filipinos love to wait until the proverbial last minute to get what's needed. Be it the RFIDs for expressways, register for polls, or in the case of PUV operators, the new fare matrix. On the weekend before new fares were to take effect, and even on the day itself, Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board offices were deluged by PUV operators seeking to get the new fare matrix. PUVs need to get the matrix in order to charge the higher fares taking effect on October 3. Without the matrix, PUVs will be fined from 5,000 to 15,000 pesos for charging the new fares. The LTFRB expected last-minute applicants for the fare matrix and open shop on the weekend before October 3 to accept applications. The LTFRB had started urging PUV operators to submit requirements for getting the new fare matrix at least two weeks before the new fares were to take effect. The LTFRB reported that only 10% of the 260,000 PUV units were issued the new fare matrix at the end of Monday, October 3. PUV operators are complaining of the tedious process for getting the new fare matrix, which included, among other requirements, the payment of 520 peso processing fee and 50 pesos for each copy of the fare matrix. Also required are the presentation of the units or CR, the submission of a copy of a provisional authority or certificate of public convenience, and proof that the CPC went through the verification process. Many are asking, is there really a need for every PUV unit to get a new fare matrix? Can't the LTFRB just print out copies and distribute them for free to PUVs in respective routes? <music> Meanwhile, the Metro subway is a priority project for the current administration. The president was present at the groundbreaking ceremonies. The dream of Metro Manila finally getting a modern subway system is now closer to reality. Groundbreaking rights were held for the construction of the Ortigas and Shaw Boulevard stations in the Metro Manila subway project. The ceremonies were led by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Department of Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista. The groundbreaking coincided with the closure of a portion of Meralga Avenue in Pasig City, from Capital Commons to Shaw Boulevard, to pave the way for construction of the two subway stations which will be connected by a 3.4-kilometer long tunnel. The Metro Manila subway will be the country's first underground railway system that will run 33 kilometers from Valenzuela City to Bicutan with 17 stations. 
been completed, the subway can accommodate 370,000 passengers daily and cut travel from Valenzuela to Bicutan in just 45 minutes. While the subway is closer to reality, it will still be a long wait. The DOTR says the closed portion of Morocco Avenue will be open to motorists in 2028. Continuing, fixers may again be gaming the online process for applying and getting driver's licenses, which may prompt the LTO to scrap online testing. The Land Transportation Office has announced that contrary to speculations, the Land Transportation Management System Online Portal, or LTMS, will not be abolished. However, an LTO press statement said the agency is considering scrapping the online exams for drivers applying for new or renewing licenses. The LTO indicated that fixers are using the online comprehensive driver's education and the CD online validation exam to charge applicants higher fees. The same press statement also revealed that a technical working group has been formed to solve the problem of fixers messing with the integrity of the online testing system. The LTO said that the technical working group is looking for ways to ensure that the applicant is really the one attending the seminar and taking the exam. The online portal and online exams offer a lot of convenience for those applying for new or renewing driver's licenses. However, fixers are putting the online processes of the LTO in jeopardy. One thought though, no matter the process, online or manual, fixers will exist as long as they have a clientele for their dubious services. And finally, the South Commuter Railway project remains firmly on track with Civil Works contract signed. The Asian Development Bank has signed four Civil Works contracts totaling $1.87 billion for the South Commuter Railway project or SCRP. The SCRP will see the establishment of 55 kilometers of railroad tracks connecting Metro Manila to the province of Laguna. According to ADB Deputy Director General for Southeast Asia, Winfried McLean, the project will open tremendous opportunities for economic integration across Metro Manila and neighboring provinces and create a significant positive impact on the local economy. DOTR Secretary Jaime Bautista expects what he described as an ambitious railway project to bring back the culture of railway in the Philippines. The community railway will provide a safe, affordable, and convenient transport for Filipinos while accelerating our economic rebound, he added. Construction of the commuter railway to the south is scheduled to begin in February 2023, with full operations expected to commence in 2029. By then, the railway system is expected to accommodate 600,000 passengers daily. Meanwhile, the project will generate 110,000 direct and indirect jobs. There is now no doubting that development of railway systems is a priority of the administration as much as it was in its predecessor. And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The ANCAP saga continues. The latest development is the Supreme Court is saying it's expediting resolution of the petition filed by Transport and a Concerned Citizen seeking to declare the ANCAP unconstitutional. Motoring Forum takes a look at this development. When the Supreme Court issued a temporary restraining against the implementation of the No Contact Apprehension Program, or NCAP, motor vehicle owners, drivers, transport groups have until next year to worry about it possibly being re-implemented. The High Court issued the TRO against the NCAP in August based on a joint petition filed by several transport groups and another by a lawyer that set oral arguments for January 24, 2023. However, the Supreme Court moved oral arguments to December 6, 2022, while scheduling a preliminary conference of the two petitions against the NCAP for November 4, 2022. In a resolution issued on September 27, the High Court ordered that the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority be furnished a copy of the petitions against the NCAP. The MMDA was then given 10 days to file its comments on the petitions. The petition cited different reasons in arguing that the NCAP was unconstitutional and illegal. One of the petitions was filed by the Kailusan sa Pagbabago ng Industriya ng Transportasyon, Inc., Pangkalahatang Sangguniya, Manila, and Suburbs Driver Association Nationwide, Alliance of Transport Operators and Drivers Association of the Philippines, and Alliance of Concerned Transport Organization. Respondents included local governments of Quezon City, Manila, Valenzuela City, Montilupa City, and Paranaque City, which issued ordinances based on the 2016 resolution of the MMDA, which ordered the re-implementation of NCAP. 
The transfer groups argued that ordinances of the LGUs implementing NCAP violated existing statutes, which do not establish, authorize, or even mention any no-contact apprehension. The implementation of NCAP violated due process and set unreasonable conditions and include non-renewal of the vehicle registration until such time that the fines are settled. They also said that the NCAP implementation makes innocent third persons liable for traffic violations. The other petition was filed by a lawyer, Human Bipaa, who pleaded for the issuance of a TRO against the NCAP implemented by the Manila City Government. Paa sought to declare Manila City Ordinance No. 8676 Series of 2020 on NCAP as unconstitutional. He argued that the ordinance was issued and implemented with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of discretion. The lawyer also said that the NCAP violates the right to privacy of persons because anyone can access the traffic violation records of people in the city's website by merely typing the plate number of the vehicle. He noted that the consent of the owners of the registered vehicles was not obtained before the operation of the website, which contains sensitive personal information. Pa also pointed out the NCAPs are being implemented by private firms in profit-sharing agreement with the LGUs. While expediting resolution of the petitions against the NCAP, the Supreme Court, through spokesperson Brian Keith F. Osaka, assured the public that the justices are aware of their concerns about motor vehicle owners and operators and will study the matter carefully. This includes concerns about what happens to the digitized traffic violations committed by motorists prior to the issuance of the TRO against the NCAP. Beyond legalities, many are hoping that any resolutions of the case against the NCAP will be fair to motor vehicle owners and drivers, while at the same time leading to more discipline among drivers on the streets. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Athlete, confident to the core. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. We now have this week's valuable motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. Kung ikaw ay galing sa garahe or sa parking lot, stop first before going ahead. Give way to the vehicles already on the road at huwag makipag-unahan o sumingit basta-basta. Same with the pedestrians. Patapusin muna sila sa pagtawid bago katuluyang lumabas. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Spying Chaper this week. Papayo chopper lang kaibigan, ako si Aliano Luico, isang kapwanyo chopper, huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasayero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong chopper lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, chopper. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. 
combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Welcome back to Motoring Today, world of motorsports, isn't it? Round one of the Clean Fuel Motocross Invitational Series saw so exciting races at the Clean Fuel Motocross Park in Silangkavite, with more than 140 entries competing in 16 categories, from novices to veterans and professionals on various dirt bikes powered from 50cc to 1500cc engines. The same can be said on round 2 held last October 1 at the same venue. Here are the highlights on this edition of Race Weekend. I am here with the president of uh, Clean Fuel, a group of companies, uh, Mr. Attorney Bongson Tai. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming over and uh, gracing this occasion. This is the first uh, Clean Fuel Motocross Invitational, and of course, we're already at our second leg. Okay. Uh, can you just give us an idea of what exactly is Clean Fuel Motocross Park all about? We visualized this, uh, the Clean Fuel Motocross Park during the pandemic. In fact, uh, nagsimula ito as uh, an outlet kasi nakita ko yung mga anak ko hindi nakakalabas ng bahay. And over a year na, that time, nasabi ko, hindi pwedeng nasa bahay lang sila. So I wanted them to be able to enjoy yung outdoors. Eh, motorcycle rider rin ako. Sabi ko, siguro it's safe naman to, to have a, to develop a track na kung saan sila makakapag uh, motor-motor. And as we, we were doing the track, I, I contacted, of course, uh, June San Andres and Kenneth, the uh, mot uh, former motocross champion, and, uh, and, and uh, NAMSA. So eventually, he said, since you're doing the track, let's do it uh, properly. You, uh, with, uh, let's follow international regulations when you do it. And uh, that's what we did. And then, uh, you know, there's so many kids so many Filipinos interested in riding a motorcycle. E usually, dito sa atin walang formal training. Nag-aaral nag mag-motor mag sa kalsada where it's dangerous. So, sabi ko, I wanted the track to be a venue for kids, especially yung mga first-time riders, to have a, a place na where they can learn to ride safely. E nung nakita namin na madaming interesado, Sabi ko, naman, let's not stop in ano, teaching them how to ride. Let's make them competitive and maybe we could produce world class riders. And uh, that's when we decided, sige, you know, aside from uh, teaching the kids how to ride, let's, uh, let's make them competitive. Let's, uh, let's, let's try to help these riders. I'm sure when uh, everyone watches this uh, this episode, you know their kids will want to try out uh, this uh, this park of yours. Can you just kindly invite everyone uh, to you know come over to uh, Silangkabite and try out uh, the motocross park here? 
for riders interested in uh, trying to hone their skills in motocross, like to invite everyone to come to Clean Fuel Silang Motocross Track. And syempre sa mga parents natin who would want their children to learn how to ride safely, you're more than welcome here to try our track. You know, we try to build a facility which does not only comply with international sports standards, but uh, we tried to build it with the needs of yung, uh, our riders and their families in mind. Please come and see our venue. We have a world-class track, a clean venue. We have uh, locker rooms for the riders and the places where they can take a shower. So uh, try our facilities. Thank you very much, uh, the president of Key, uh, Clean Fuel uh, Group of Companies, uh, Attorney Bong Suntai. We are looking forward to the next leg. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming here. The Clean Fuel Watercross Park in Sri Lanka Vita is helping keep dirt bike racing alive and growing. Kudos to organizers of the Clean Fuel Motocross Invitational Series. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis. Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Among the models to join Toyota Motor Fuel Pieces GRS lineup is the Hilux. Showcase checks out the Toyota Compact pickup given the Gazoo Racing treatment. Toyota Motor Philippines has grown a lineup of models inspired and or developed using what the Japanese car maker learned from its participation in the world of motorsports. This lineup carries the GR tag for Gazoo Racing, Toyota's motorsports division. Already, the local GR lineup includes the GR Supra and the GR Yaris. Toyota's also introduced models that have gotten the GR treatment. These include the Vios GRS, the Fortuner GRS, and the Hilux GRS. According to Toyota, rolling out the Hilux GRS is in line with Toyota Gazoo Racing's ambition to bring acceleration, the joy of driving and sport performance to Toyotas, including the pickup truck. So what has the GR treatment given the Hilux GRS? A Hilux GRS looks both sleek and sporty, but at the same time, it exudes a tough and powerful presence on the road, taking up space that's 5,320mm long, 1,900mm wide, and 1,850mm tall. There's not much to distinguish the GRS exterior from that of the other Hilux variants. It comes with the same B-beam LED headlamps and auto-leveling function, LED daylight running lights, LED front fog lamps, and LED rear combination lamp with line guide. However, the wide over fenders with black garnish are body colored in the Hilux GRS and the sports bar with LED deck lamp comes in gloss black color. Then there's the 18-inch GR design alloy wheels wrapped by 26560 R18 tires. The GRS also features a bed liner, intermittent windshield wipers with time adjust, hood lift and tailgate assist function, as well as outside rear view mirrors that power adjust and fold. There are more distinguishing features made to the GRS interior. Most conspicuous is the suede and leather with red stitch upholstery for the seats. The driver's seat power just 8 ways, but the front passenger seat only adjusts 4 ways manually. 
The steering wheel gets the leather with red stitches and the GR emblem and comes in paddle shifters. It controls for the audio and phone and the 4.2-inch TFT multi-information display on the instrument panel on the dashboard. The Hilux GRS is also equipped with virtually all of the comfort and convenience features found in the Conquest, smart keyless entry and push start system, power windows with auto up and down function and with jam protect, speed sensing door locks, dual zone automatic air conditioning, cruise control, two 12 volt accessory outlets. As in the Hilux Conquest, the GRS also comes with an 8 inch display audio system with AM FM radio, Bluetooth, USB, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, smart device link, mirror cast, and six speakers. The Toyota Hilux GRS rolled out locally is powered by 2.8-liter four-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine with intercooler capable of generating 204 PS and 500 newton meters of torque. The engine is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and a 4x4 drivetrain that comes with auto disconnect differential and differential lock. The Hilux GRS suspension was upgraded to make it even more capable of driving on the roughest of terrains. Monotube shock absorbers were used with the front double wishbones and rear leaf springs on the Hilux. The brake system was also upgraded by using the GR brake calipers on the front ventilated disc although the rear still got their basic drums. And like the all-new Hilux variants that the GRS comes standard with anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, as well as vehicle stability control and hill start assist. Like all Hilux Conquest variants, the Hilux GRS also comes with downhill assist control as well as a panoramic view camera and monitor that along with 6 clearance and back sonar sensors, 2 in the front and 4 in the rear, makes it a breeze to park the pickup. Also added for safety in the GRS are driver and front passenger side curtain shield and knee airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for 5 with pretension and a force limiter for the driver and front seat passenger, a child restraint system using ISOFIX and teether anchors, and the Toyota vehicle security system with immobilizer. The Toyota Hilux GRS comes with much of the bells and whistles that should make it deserve the Gazoo Racing Tag. Maybe we'll see some soon at the Philippine Rallycross Series that's making its return this year. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Isuzu San Pablo is moving to a new, bigger and better site to cater to growing clientele in the city and the province of Laguna. Groundbreaking rights were held for an improved dealer showroom and service center. At the groundbreaking rights were IPC executives headed by President Noboru Murakami and Gen Cars Inc. executive headed by Chairman and CEO D. Edgar A. Cabangon and Evangeline Garcia, Isuzu San Pedro General Manager. Jenkins will relocate the San Pablo branch to make room for a bigger facility for their customers. The new Isuzu San Pablo will bear the new features in compliance with Isuzu Outlet Standard or iOS, signifying their commitment to providing even better customer satisfaction to Isuzu patrons in San Pablo Laguna. At the new strategic location, Isuzu San Pablo will have a bigger space for the expansion of their facility to cater to more walk-in customers and to service more vehicles. 
Laguna has fairly a big market, so Gencars took the initiative to have this new site, which is around 7,220 square meters. On a 7,220 square meter lot along kilometer 85 of the Maharlika Highway, Barangay San Ignacio San Pablo City will rise a dealership housing a wider showroom area that can accommodate light commercial vehicles and truck display units and a spacious service center that can cater to the increasing demand for service in the area. We have decided to relocate our Isuzu San Pablo dealership because we want to give both our existing and future customers a better customer service. Through our compliance with the Isuzu outlet standardization, we are looking forward to providing everyone enhanced and more convenient customer journey. Honda Cars Kauaian in Isabela's Level Up. A member of the network of Honda dealerships of the Gateway Group has inaugurated its newly renovated facilities. We're here at the official inauguration of Honda Cars Kauaian in Isabela. It's actually been here for some time, but we're proud to say this is the first newly renovated dealership with the new CI. So we're actually the first and it's 3,500 square meters and our workshop can accommodate up to 30 units per day and our showroom can accommodate a five-car display. Honda Cars Kauai is one of the first dealerships to feature Honda's new corporate image concept. We have applied basically our uh, new uh, corporate image or BI no? and we have applied here our basic concept of what we call the active reception wherein the focus of the dealership is really to cater to the needs of our Honda customers. No? Honda Cars Kauai caters to the provinces of Region 2, including Carino, Nueva Vizcaya, Isabela, and Cagayan. And Gateway believes upgrading its dealership in Kauai is perfectly timed. Uh, market here, we see uh, a lot of potential for growth, uh, and it's certainly booming, especially now that uh, we're close to the end of the pandemic. Kim Atienza, better known as Kuya Kim, cyclist, marathoner, triathlete, TV personality, former congressman, and motorcycle enthusiast, is continuing on as brand ambassador for BMW Motorrad. And in a partnership with Petron, Kuya Kim will go on a Make a Life Ride adventure on board the R150 GS Style Rally. The partnership with BMW and Petron aims to draw motorcycle enthusiasts into adventure riding and create a more awareness for BMW Motorrad's rider education and road safety advocacies. According to Spencer Yu, president of SMC Asia Car Distributors Corp., official importer and distributor of BMW Motorrad in the Philippines, with Kuya Kim as partner in building the BMW community, the brand is not only expanding its riding groups but also spreading the cause to create riders that advocate for proper rider education and road safety. The partnership with Petron will enable Kuya Kim to experience the full potential of the BMW R150 GS style rally on its adventures. According to the Lemuel C. Quezon, Assistant Vice President, Marketing Division Head of Petron Corporation, with a partnership with Kuya Kim, Petron wants other riders to have a look at the Petron experience on much power, peak performance, and smooth rides. The Toyota Certified Used Vehicle Facility will now be known as T-Shirt. The new name is quite apt for the program that aims to provide an alternative to customers looking for worry-free car purchase options without compromising quality, value, safety, and excellent service. According to TMP Senior Vice President for Marketing Masatoshi Toya, T-Shirt provides peace of mind to those trading in an old vehicle or buying a pre-owned car. TMP is also improving the operational efficiency of the T-Shirt dealer network and addressing the concerns of used car customers. One major improvement is the expansion of T-Shirt dealer outlets nationwide, which offer trade-in deals of selling of pre-owned cars. As of September, the T-Shirt dealer outlets number 29 with TMP targeting to increase it to 33 by year-end. TMP also assures customers of fair pricing using the T-Shirt used car app with a built-in pricing tool showing real-time price range of various models depending on quality, level, and local market pricing. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.